Hello everyone, my name is Jack Sorrell and today I'm going to show you how to homebrew your Nintendo 3DS on firmware version 11.3 and add lots of homebrew apps. You can use the timestamps on screen now or in the description to skip to the parts you want to watch. Let's start off with how to homebrew your Nintendo 3DS. The full compatibility list is listed below this video. How to homebrew your Nintendo 3DS on firmware version 11.3 Before we start the tutorial, I'd like to let you know that I'm now on Patreon. Patreon is the best way to help me so I can make more videos. You can donate as little as £1 per video, or as much as you like. It's completely optional. And don't forget, no matter how much you donate, you will be featured in the next week's video. Head over to patreon.com slash for more information. Now, let's get started. The first thing you have to do is open up system settings and check that your firmware version is on 11.3. If your 3DS is not on 11.3, check the description. It might still be compatible with this homebrew version. Note down your entire 3DS firmware version, including the letter at the end. We'll need to use this later. Now, remove your SD card from the 3DS. Depending on your 3DS model, the SD card can be at the side or in the back. The new 3DS and new 3DS XL have the SD card in the back. The normal 3DS and 3DS XL have their SD cards at one of the sides. Loosen the screws using a small screwdriver, then use your stylus to pop the back off. Push the SD card down like you would do with a game card and it will pop up. Now use an adapter to connect the SD card to your computer. Now on your computer, go to the Homebrew Launcher website which is linked below. Then download the Homebrew Starter Kit. Here, you want to select your firmware version which you noted down from earlier. Select New if you have a new 3DS and select Old if you have an old 3DS. Now that you've entered your 3DS firmware version, click on Download Other App. Now go to the Soundtax website which is also linked below. Depending on the letter at the end of your 3DS firmware version, choose the correct region. For me, it's the letter E, so I'm going to choose Europe. Then select old or new 3DS depending on your 3DS model. By the way, Nintendo 2DS counts as old 3DS. Then click on Download M4A. Now you should have these three files. Rename this.bin file to otherapp.bin. This is a .bin file so it will add the extension automatically. You don't need to type it. Now copy the M4A music file and the other app.bin file to the root of the 3DS SD card. Then copy the 3DS folder and boot.3dsx file to the root of the SD card too. Now 
Now eject the SD card and put it back into your 3DS. Now on your 3DS, open the Nintendo 3DS Sound app. When it's finished loading, open up the SD card folder. And finally, play the music file inside. And that's it, you've now homebrewed your Nintendo 3DS on firmware version 11.3. There should be a homebrew app named CHMM2, a theme manager for the 3DS. If you don't see this app in your homebrew launcher, you can find a link for it below. Now let's get started. Take the SD card out from your 3DS and put it into your PC. Go to this website, which is linked below. You can see here, there are really thousands of themes. There's so many of them, so you'll have to look for your own theme, I can't show them all. In the top left corner, there's a magnifying glass icon. If you click it, you can search for a theme. Now let's find a good theme and download it. Here's one called Windows XP. If you press the play button that's on the website, you can listen to the music that will play when you're on the home menu. Let's install the Windows XP theme for this tutorial. Download the theme, then extract the zip file to your desktop. Inside, there is a README and a preview. Look at the preview just in case you get any themes mixed up. Open the 3DS SD card using File Explorer and look for the theme folder that's on the root of the 3DS SD card. You can see the themes that I used for the example in here. Drag the theme and put it into the themes folder on the 3DS SD card. That's all you have to do on the computer. Now eject the 3DS SD card or close the micro SD management software on the 3DS. Now put the SD card back into your 3DS and turn it on. You can see that you've still got the same theme as you had before. That's because we have to install it now. Turn your 3DS off and open the homebrew launcher like we did before. Now that you're in the homebrew launcher, open the app named CHMM2. 
After it loads, you can see all the themes that you have on your 3DS SD card. Use the D-pad to scroll through the themes. When you see the theme that you just downloaded, press A while it's selected and it will install. Wait about 10 seconds, then press start and select exit, then press A. It will then take you back to the Homebrew Launcher. On the Homebrew Launcher, press start, then press A and it will reboot your 3DS. Now you can see that the theme you just installed has been applied to your 3DS home menu. Look for this app. If you don't see this app in your Homebrew Launcher, you can download the app by using the link below. All you have to do is open the app and you'll see three options on the bottom screen. The options on the bottom screen will be set play coins to 0, set play coins to 10 and set play coins to 300. I'm going to choose 300 for this video. If you want to choose a different one, use the D-pad to change the option then press A when it's selected. After you've done that and it's finished loading, press the B button. You should be taken back to the Homebrew Launcher. Now, press start, then press A and your 3DS will reboot. And now, on my 3DS, you can see that I have 300 play coins. If you don't think this is real, or if these are fake play coins, here's some proof. Let's open Kirby Triple Deluxe and try buying some keychains. You can see that it worked perfectly. Now let's try Street Pass Me Plaza. Let's try buying some puzzle pieces. Yep, this works as normal. Now let's try hiring old allies on Street Pass Quest. You can see that these are real play coins and you can spend them on anything. Look for these two apps. MGBA and Quick NES. If you don't see these apps in your homebrew launcher, you can download them using the link below. Remove the SD card from the 3DS and insert it into the PC. On your desktop, make a folder and name it ROMs. Inside that folder, make two new folders. Name one of them GBA and the other NES. 
Now, go on your favourite ROM downloading website and download some NES and GPA ROMs. You can download some NES and GPA ROMs using the links below. I've already got some on my PC. After you've got the ROMs you want, copy the NES ROMs to the NES folder. Copy the GBA ROMs to the GBA folder. Now, copy the ROMs folder onto your 3DS SD card. Eject the SD card from your computer and put it back into your 3DS. Open the Homebrew Launcher by holding L and powering on the 3DS at the same time. Let's test the GBA ROMs first. Scroll down on the Homebrew Launcher and run MGBA. Navigate to the ROMs folder, then open the GBA folder and run one of the GBA ROMs. After you load a GBA ROM in the GBA emulator, the sound can sound a bit weird for a few minutes. Other than that, it plays very well. You can press the Y button on your 3DS to choose how the game is displayed. Now let's try playing NES ROMs. Go back to the Homebrew Launcher and run Quick NES. Press A on Load Content, then navigate to the ROMs folder and open the NES folder, then run one of the games inside. To remove the code that's on the bottom screen, just touch the screen. This one works better than the GBA emulator. It sounds great all the time and it plays just like the original NES. Well, that's all for today. My name is Jack Sorrell and I'll see you next Sunday for a brand new video.